We know, yes, she was very much brought up in the Isle of Man. She was born in London. We're not entirely sure where. Um, but her family moved to Douglas when she was a child. And uh, they ran a boarding house. And uh, that's where she met her husband, Robert. Um, he came from Manchester. And uh, she married very early. She was only 18. And they moved across to Manchester and um, had 11 children. So she had to combine her family life with her campaigning life as well and Emmeline in particular was brought on board very uh, from a very early age and uh, went with her mother to various events where um, she spoke about um, anti-slavery, about uh, the anti-corn law um, bill that was going through at the time and um, finally um, for a considerable amount of time she moved back to the island with her husband and uh, died in Strathallan Crescent. She had a, had, there was a house there and uh, that became the family home. And um, Robert died in 1892 and Sophia died in 1910. So there was, a, there was quite a strong link between um, the UK and the island in terms of the women's suffrage movement. And, the, um, and Emmeline and, and the other children would have travelled backwards and forwards to visit their parents on as regular a basis as they, probably, as they possibly could. So, so why do you think it is, given that she's such an intrinsic part of the women's suffrage mm. movement, that Sophia Golden isn't remembered as a Manx icon in, in the same way as, say, T.E. Brown or yes, William Doan? Yeah. I have to say, I was not particularly aware of Sophia until probably about a year or so ago. Oh, nor was I. Nor, uh, nor many people. Yes, because, of course, we, we focus so heavily on Emmeline. And, of course, Emmeline Pankhurst. Pankhurst is with her married name. Golden would have been her uh, uh, her uh, maiden name, and Sophia Golden was Sophia Crane when she was born. So the the manxness of the names perhaps has um, dissipated over over the years. But everybody, of course, knows about Emmeline. Um, but and without Sophia's input and Emmeline being um, part of um, Sophia's campaigning. Um, vision, if you like, the women's suffrage movement would not have probably have had as much impact as it, as it actually did. Well, Tinwald has now formally given yes. its blessing, if yes, you like, to the movement yes. to erect a statue in Sophia's yes. memory. Did you notice a, a, a certain unwillingness among certain members yesterday? Oh, uh, one or two. <laughs> I thought, actually, it was a perfect example of democracy in action. Mm. Um, it was wonderful that it were that um, two of the... Um, Female members of Tinwald supported, um, nominated, and seconded the motion. Um, I don't really want to say anything towards perhaps some of their male colleagues, but you know, the beauty of Tinwald and the beauty of democracy is that everybody has a say in what goes on and everybody was able to express their views. And I'm delighted that at the end the motion was very easily carried and of course it doesn't involve any expenditure on part on the part of on the part of Tinwald or government uh, purses at all it's entirely through public subscription that the statue will be erected in due course absolutely